Everything is too far-fetched. So you want, make one claim, stake your claim. You got this, then say, now look, look at this one. He says, yes, that's proved your point there. And said, look at this one, and we prove our point, but you won't need all that. If there is a sincere person, sincere at heart, you proved your one case, he wants to know further, what did he teach? Let me see, what does the book say? And Allah will open his eyes. But if the person doesn't want to, you're wasting time. You give a hundred prophecies, a thousand prophecies, Jesus Christ with a thousand prophecies to his backing, that the Messiah is coming. The Jews re re rejected him. Thousand prophecies and miracle working, giving life to the dead, walking on the water. All. Healing the lepers, the blind. What to what away? Nothing. See, the thing is now, stake your claim. Make a point, prove it. And now let's see the reaction. Where does the man want to go from here? And if it need be, ask he says, look. There is a book called Muhammad in the Bible, actually, by Kaldani, Abdul Ahad Kaldani. He was a Syrian priest who had become Muslim. Fantastic. Very concentrated. It needs people like my brother who was here. You must read that, digest that, and start sharing with ordinary people. You see, it's concentrated work. Muhammad in the Bible by Kaldani. And you can deliver a dozen lectures from there on this subject of Bible prophecy. But to, to me, I feel that one thing at a time. Prove your case. Whatever it is, prove your case. More profitable than a dozen suggestions. So this is mine, this is mine, that is mine, that is mine, everything belongs to me. They say, no, no, no. You just put your claim and say, look, this clause here refers to me. This is my stake. Please, as you said the, the other night, that there is no an iota of difference between the fundamental teaching of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. But we all know, we all know now that there is a fundamental difference between the three mentioned religions. Would you please tell us when and where and how this difference occurred? Thank you. The fun, I said there is not an iota, the question was, that I had said, I think at the first meeting, that there is an, not an iota one jot, one tittle, one dot of difference between the teaching, the fundamentals of the teachings of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. And the brother wants to know that now where, today we know there are differences. Where did the differences arise? Well, with regards to Judaism, in the concept of God, except for saying that, you know, they have certain concept which is not coming far enough, but it was given to them according to the background and experience, according to the needs. They are still a monotheistic people. They believe in oneness of God. With regards to the Christians, they have deviated away from the path. You see, Jesus Christ taught the unity of God. He said, Shama Israel Adonai Elohainu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Finish. He repeated what Moses had given for 1300 years before. No difference. But now where did the Trinity come from? You see, the pagan world around Palestine, the Romans and the Greeks, they had the man gods beyond counting. Around the time when Jesus walked this earth, these people, they worshipped many gods. They had the Trinity. Who? The Romans had the Trinity. They had a Trinity as is Apollo, Venus, Horus, Oh, they had their man gods beyond counting. Uh, they had their um, Jupiter, the god of heaven, Pluto, the god of hell, Vulcan, the god of fire, Neptune, the god of the sea, Mars, the god of war, and Zeus was the father of all these many gods with his many wives and many children sitting on some planet, and from there he was sending his sons into the world. As the need arose, his Apollo, his Horus, his Isis, his Osiris, See, this was sh pure mythology, sheer mythology, fairy tale. But a people who believe in fairy tales, fairy tales are not fairy tales. These are realities. So among such a people goes this new religion, a new teaching of Jesus Christ, that the Son of God, metaphorical, a Son of God has come into in Palestine. So what was metaphorical to the Jew became literal to the Greek. And they became the pioneers of that message to the Western world. 
So today the Christian world is looking at a Jewish scripture. Jewish scripture, Jewish language, a Hebrew idiom and metaphors through Greek glasses, as the Greeks saw it. So they saw Trinity where there's no Trinity, they saw plurality where there's no plurality. This is the problem. The problem was created at the Council of Nisi in 325, where they declared Jesus Christ to be God incarnate, God in human form. This was democratically passed at a synod meeting of the bishops in 325, 325 years after Jesus. The only God who was democratically elected was Jesus Christ. You see? So that is where it started in the year 325. I don't know where the brother is who asked the question. You see what? Oh, yes. That, that is my knowledge. How, that's how hard it goes. Yes. Could do that. After your three lectures, uh, we can understand that is, it is easy to understand that the message is the same for all the human uh, kind. You have experience with the priests. Why the priests are not able to understand that? And if they understand that, why do they never speak with the people with this simple logic? I think there are two difficulties. Why the learned man, in any religion, he doesn't see the truth. You see, he does the learned man. He opposes truth bitterly. You see, the people, if you read the Bible, you find that the people who opposed Moses, who were they? They were the leaders of the Bani Israel. See, every man feels that, look, am I not better than this fellow? You know, this man is a stutterer, man. You know, he's a renegade from the law. We run away. And now God chooses him. Resistance. Jesus Christ. Same. Resistance. Who is this upstart, young fellow? What is he? What does he know? What? No, look, we are the learned people. We are the leaders of the Sanhedrin. And this young man is telling us, you know, where to get off. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, same. Abu Jahl. Resistance. Abu Jahl. You know what it means? Father of ignorance. And yet that man was one of the clever, cleverest of the Arabs. He was one of the very few persons, you can, people whom you can count on your fingertips who could read and write. His real title was Abul Hik, father of wisdom. He's the wisest of the Arabs. Why does he resist? Why does he reject? Same, jealousy comes in. You see, his awwal sin, the first sin, shaitan, jealous. Am I not better than him? He's made of dust, I'm made of fire. Why should I bow down to him? Same, it's an eternal thing with man, jealousy. You see, jealousy comes in. This man, son of Abdullah, an orphan, a camel driver, and a goat herd. He was looking after his uncle Abu Talib's goats. And now he says, God chose him. <laughs> God couldn't see me. <laughs> this man can't even write. He can't even sign his name, and God goes and chooses him. Imagine. <laughs> so this is, this is man, the nature of man, the learned man. Vested interest comes in. Pride comes in. It's hard. It is hard. You see, unless you bring a lowly spirit, a humble spirit, it is very difficult to accept truth. This is the pride of man that makes him to do that. Shaitani yet, you know, the devilishness. <laughs> Am I not better than him? <laughs> May I ask two questions if I have time? Yes, one of, uh, one would be of, a, I would say, a doctrinal nature, the other of an ethical nature. The, the first one, uh, it is known, and you stressed it very eloquently and in a scholarly way, that uh, there is great convergence between the Bible and the Holy Quran in, let's say, matters concerning the past, for instance, creation, Adam and Eve, and Abraham, and Noah, and so on. But there is also great convergence concerning the, the future in both